Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Dork Side. I am the Dork in the Road, and today I'm going to tell you how to find areas to ride your dual sport or adventure motorcycle off-road. That's right everyone, I am the Dork in the Road and I want to be your internet riding buddy, so please consider subscribing. Don't forget to turn on those notifications so that you know when I post awesome new content just like this. One of my big goals is to help new riders get the information they need in order to get started and have a good time as they take their first fledgling steps into the sport and also to provide some tips and hints along the way that might actually benefit experienced riders as well. So a question I get a lot on my videos is, where can I go riding? How do I find places to ride? I just got a new bike and I want to take it out in the woods but I don't know where I'm allowed to ride. I'm going to share a few tools, tips, and techniques that I've used to find riding areas that uh, hopefully can at least get you pointed in the right direction. If it helps, I'm in the USA, Oregon specifically, so some of the stuff I talk about will be USA specific. Some of the stuff I talk about will make a lot more sense for Oregon and maybe less sense for other parts of the country, but I can only speak to my own experience. So, a few places that you can reliably count on being able to ride your motorcycle off-road. The first one is an obvious one, and that is public lands, and that is where I do most of my off-road riding, particularly for me in National Forests. The Willamette National Forest is very close to me. I've spent a lot of time there. Uh, the Syusla National Forest is another one I've explored quite a bit. So the first tip is find national forests or other public lands managed by the Forest Service, your state forestry department, or the Bureau of Land Management near you and head out to those areas. And I'll get into a little bit more specifics on how you can find roads and stuff to ride here in a minute. Another great area to ride is designated OHV areas, that is off-highway vehicle areas. Now one, those are great if you have a dual sport that you're comfortable taking on the trails, but even if you're not, often they also have road systems, off-road road systems, gravel roads, dirt roads, connecting trails, and usually they're connected to a bigger road system that's nearby. So a lot of the OHV areas, at least the forest-based ones here in Oregon, also have forest road systems nearby. Shotgun Creek, as an example, has a bunch of trails, but you could ride forever on the roads out there and never even get on a trail. So if you've got an adventure bike or something like that that you're not comfortable taking on trails, it's still worth looking at OHV areas and seeing if there are roads that you can ride nearby. Another place you can ride, but this one's a little trickier, is private land. Uh, some logging companies and other companies like that are okay with their land, just kind of people using it and going across it. That used to be a lot more prevalent when I was younger. Nowadays, at least around here, the logging companies have really locked down their area, in large part because people don't take care of it. They set fires and leave garbage and stuff, so keep an eye out for private lands that are kind of open. This is definitely a sort of word of mouth thing you want to do. Don't just assume because there's private land that you can use it but often at least in the forest if there's no gate or a sign it's probably okay for you to be there or at the very least you have plausible deniability but again that's what I would call a last resort and it, it's helpful to maybe talk to someone or hear about a spot from someone who knows it's okay to be there or get permission from the landowner. I'm not advocating trespassing or blatantly disregarding private property signs but there are some private places owned by clubs things like that that you can go into but do your research ahead of time. So how do you find those places to ride? Well, great question. There are a few tools that I use. One of the tools I've used most often to find riding areas is also one of the cheapest and easiest to use, and that is Google Maps. So if you look at Google Maps, you can see there's a lot of green on the map. Now this light green stuff, you wanna kind of ignore that. That's not what you're after, but this darker green, and the light green goes away as you zoom in, so you can see it gets kind of white. But this darker green is generally, and I'm saying generally, public land. Uh, owned by the Forest Service, National Forest, whatever. And you can see, if you zoom out far enough, see this is the Willamette National Forest. Deschutes National Forest is here. There's a few others that you can see. Gifford Pinchot, uh, I'm probably saying that wrong. Start with that. Start by zooming out and finding your National Forest, and then zoom in on your National Forest and look for the dark green areas. And these roads, generally, this yellow is a highway, but these white roads are generally gravel roads. And there's another way to check and tell, and that's to hit the satellite view. And you can see, right? If this was a bunch of houses, we'd know that's a housing complex. It's not. So you can see that these are roads that go through the wilderness. And generally, if they connect to a highway, that's a good starting point. So Google Maps is a good resource. And if the farther you zoom in, the more detailed you get of the roads. A few things to know about Google Maps, though. It's not always super accurate. The roads aren't exactly where they're where it says they are. Sometimes when you get to the more obscure roads, I've struggled with that and gotten not lost, but definitely had to improvise a few times. So something to know about. 
Another great tool is Onyx. So this is Onyx Off-Road. There's two versions. There's a paid version and a free version. The free version has slightly less information, but for the most part, it's still pretty good. This is that same area, and you can see all of these very detailed roads. You can also plan your route. You can do this on both Google Maps and Onyx, but on the computer, and then send it to your phone. Onyx is a phone app and a computer app, and it has marked trails and often will tell you where there's a gate and also where there are points of interest, like this waterfall, these campsites and stuff. So Onyx is an app that I've gotten a lot of use out of. It also does a really good job of showing you where the boundaries of the National Forest are. Do you see how this is all Willamette National Forest? This is Bureau of Land Management land, Mount Jefferson Wilderness, so you can see where the barriers are, what's private and what's public land. So super helpful there. So Google Maps and Onyx are a couple great apps. Avenza is another great app that I use. I primarily use it for trail riding, but Avenza is great because you can take a PDF of an area. So if there's a Forest Service PDF or a trail map, and it'll actually put you on that map using GPS, right down to what direction you're pointing and stuff. So you can download, for instance, here, I can get a map of the San Am Corridor or the Cascadia area from the Forest Service in Avenza. And then I've got all the areas and everything, the roads are all on there, and it'll just show me where I am on that map. So that's another Another good resource. Events is a great app. So that's three tools you can use. There are other ways to find riding areas. One, talk to other humans. I know, terrifying, not my favorite thing, but there are lots of other humans who know the area and have discovered all the good riding spots and can really help you narrow it down. So where do you find these humans? Great question. Your local bike shop is a great place to start and ask, especially if they sell dual sport or adventure bikes. It's worth asking, where do people ride? Is there a riding club? Is there an area? What rides do you recommend? Those guys usually know stuff and they're generally willing to talk and friendly, depending on where you are. Lots of resources online. There's a ton of Facebook groups, Facebook groups for local riders. There's a Pacific Northwest Dual Sport Riders group. There's a Willamette Valley Dual Sport Riders group. There's all kinds of groups that are tethered specifically to where you live geographically, so I would look out for that. And also things like discords, like the Dork in the Road Discord, where lots of people get together to talk about setting up rides and share their riding areas and stuff. So other humans are a great resource for finding places to ride. How However, in general, at least online, people are a little reluctant to share their riding areas because they don't want to post it online and then a bunch of people show up and ruin it. And that happens a lot. So it's a lot easier to get that information from someone that you kind of know or someone that you've met in person. Riders are generally more willing to share information when they can talk to you and see that you're not a douchebag and you're probably not going to destroy the area or have a big kegger or dump a couch or a refrigerator up there. Talk to other people. They can point you towards riding areas, locals in your area. Tons of good spots. And another great way to find riding areas is the most obvious one. Get on your bike and ride. Head out towards the wilderness or the forest or whatever's close to you and just as you're riding along the highway, keep your eyes peeled for roads, gravel roads heading up into the woods or whatever that don't have gates on them. And if there's no gate and no sign, generally you at least have plausible deniability. It's probably okay to explore there. Uh, it helps to have looked at the map ahead of time to know what's public land and what isn't. But generally, if logging companies or other private landowners are trying to keep you out, there will at least be a sign and or a gate. If there's a gate, definitely don't go. But you, if you drive out into the wilderness, and you don't have to just do this on your motorcycle. Anytime you're in your car driving from point A to point B, I'm always, it's like I can smell them sniffing out. Oh, there's a gravel road I've never seen. Or, oh, I wonder where that road goes. So just keep your eyes open. Make mental notes. Mark them in your phone, like in Google Maps. I do that to find places to go check out later on on your motorcycle. So just keep your eyes open. Go scouting. Talk to people. Those are all great ways to find stuff. If you're using Onyx, it will sometimes have a picture. It'll show you where the gate is. I don't know if that's just the paid version or if both versions have. That's super handy because people can mark the gates on their maps and share it. Make sure that anytime you're out exploring that you pack your garbage out, right? Don't leave garbage, don't wreck things, don't make messes, don't destroy the terrain, don't kill vegetation because those areas get closed off when people don't take care of them. So it's important that you are having a positive impact when you're out in the woods and not having a negative impact and leaving garbage and getting things likely to be closed down. Starting fires in particular, that's a big one around here, especially after the summer we just had. Some tips while you're out there exploring. My policy is when in doubt, always go up. And in general, that leads to occasional 
really awesome scenic vistas. Something to know about if you've never spent time in the woods, generally there are main roads and those often have a four digit number and then they have spur roads that go off of them. Sometimes those spur roads connect to other main roads. Sometimes they just go up to what's called a landing, at least in logging company territory where you just go up and it's just a dead end. And you're gonna have a lot of those dead ends, but those semi-abandoned spur roads are also the most fun exploring and riding. It's just you never guaranteed you're gonna be able to turn around easily at the top, but most of the time you can. Nine times out of 10, it's a dead end, but every once in a while, it is a beautiful lake or a stream or it leads up to an amazing overlook and it makes all the other dead ends worth it. That's just some tips and ideas that I have for people maybe to help you try to find places to get out and ride. Hopefully you got some information, something that you might find useful when you're on your search for places to ride. Definitely try to tap into those resources. Hopefully that's enough to get you started. Take my advice, get out there and explore, because the worst thing that happens is you get yourself a good motorcycle ride out of it. No real consequences there. So have a good time, get out and explore. Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like it. Uh, don't hesitate to subscribe if you haven't already. I just wanna give a shout out to my patrons and channel members and thank them for all of their support and encourage you to check out dorkintheroad.com, my new website, which is your one-stop shop for all your dorky motorcycling goodness. But for now, and as always, I just wanna say thank you very much for watching and please do not forget to be excellent to each other. Thank you. Excellent! So I try, I find, uh, Maps, maps, maps. Onyx, onyx, onyx.